Good afternoon, Seabrook family. I'm Eddie Leone, and I'm going to walk you through your new 37 Sea Hunter. Let's start at the back of the boat and go over some of the items that I feel are important for you to know a little bit about, even though you may not need to do any service or actually touch any of these items. First of all, on the motors, you've got propellers, lower units, your entire Mercury setup mostly is going to be serviced by your local Mercury dealer. However, it's important for you to know some items. For instance, in this area here, you've got the water pickup, which is, a, is going to allow cooling water into the Mercury's. If you ever have an overheat alarm, you may want to check and make sure nothing has clogged uh, or covered these intakes, such as a plastic bag. Also, starting here on the transom, you've got your dive ladder. Now this dive ladder pulls out and your fins open up, which will allow you to step onto the boat easily. Remember, when you're done using the dive ladder, to fold your fins up and slide the ladder back in, verifying that this pin is secured. If the ladder is left in the down position when you take off, what you're probably going to see is the ladder bouncing in the water and leaving a lot of spray. It'll probably wet you back in the boat if you take off and forget to lift this ladder. So it's one of the things that you just want to make sure if you use it, you store it in the stored position. Secondly, you've got trim tabs here. These trim tabs allow you to control the side to side balance of the boat and also some of the running angles of the boat. If you want to push your nose down in the water a little bit, your trim tabs are going to allow you to control the angle at which your boat runs. Also, here in the back, you've got four underwater lights. These underwater lights are controlled at your dash control, and you probably can't see them when they're on during the day, but at night they illuminate the whole back of the boat in a beautiful blue color. Lastly, in the very bottom of the boat, you've got the plug, which allows water to drain out of the inside of the boat. It's very important that you make sure that plug is in the boat when you're going to launch the boat into the water for the first time. Secondly, these are your water pickups for your bait wells and your salt water wash down. So these two uh, pickups allow water to come into the boat for use at different items in the boat such as your salt water wash down and your bait wells. And you've got the drains for the boat located underneath this transom. This is where water exits the boat if it gets onto the deck. Here we are in the back of the boat. We just launched the boat and we're adding some fuel. So we'll start here at the back and work our way forward. The first thing I want you to notice, which is the largest option that we have on your boat, is the bench seat. And the way this bench seat operates is there's a strap in the back that will allow you to tilt the entire seat forward if you need to access your bilge panel or the drains in the back. For instance, if something slides behind the seat, this is the easiest way to reach behind and get anything out from behind the seat and also to clean behind the seat. Then, if you want to remove the seat for any reason, there are two pins that hold the seat in. Located on each side, we went ahead and pulled the pins on the back seat. So now to remove the back seat, grab the strap, get in behind it, and it's easy enough for one person to lift the seat and remove it from the boat. Now you've got the entire deck space to either use for fishing or just if you need to get in and clean and access any of your hatches. Okay, I'm going to take you inside the bilge compartment for the 37 Sea Hunter. Inside this very furthest uh, hatch towards the back, you find most of your pumps and the through haul drains. Looking inside, and I'll try to point these out as best I can, you've got one, two, three, and four. Four drains that all should remain open. These are the drains that allow water 
to flow out from inside the boat and exit the boat. So if any water gets onto the deck, that's where it would drain overboard. You have a fifth exit here. This is for your toilet. If you want it to pump any of the waste overboard, this uh, white tubing into the through hull is where it would exit the boat. And to know that these through hulls are open, you want these handles in line with the tubing. If they were closed, they would be at a 90 degree angle from the tubing. But you want to make sure they're open at all times. So one, two, three, four are always in line. And this one is in line only if you're going to pump waste overboard. If you're not going to pump waste overboard, you would close the handle in a 90 degree uh, turn. Okay, then looking further forward in the bilge hatch, you've got one, two through hull drains, which are the water pickups. On the outside of the boat, you have two pickup valves that allow water to come in. They would come in through these tubes. This tube here would run to your bait well pump on the port side of the boat. This one here would run to this bait well pump on the starboard side of the boat. And on this piping, you've got a secondary tube that runs to the salt water wash down. So if you wanted to wash the boat down with the salt water, this is where water comes in. Again, to keep these open or in the on position, you would put them in line with the tubing. If you wanted to close them, you put them at a 90 degree angle. One thing that does happen with the bait wells is when you are running and they are in the open position, water comes into the bait well automatically. So if you do not want any water into those bait wells in the corners of the boat, you would go ahead and shut these or put these in the off position. Looking forward from your water pickups are your bilge pumps, which are the white canisters. The black canisters are your high water, uh, high water alarms and float switches. So if water came up to a certain level in the bilge, these would automatically turn on your bilge pumps and give you an alarm, which I will show you shortly, uh, to let you know that there's water in the bilge. This large brass through hole fitting is the transducer, which shows your electronics depth and sonar readings. And forward of that, you've got three drains which allow water or any kind of debris to exit the three large fish boxes in the boat and that water drains into the bilge and gets pumped overboard by the bilge pumps. The last thing we're going to go over inside the bilge compartment is your fuel management system. Now inside the bilge since you have three motors, you have one, two, three fuel management systems which have Raycor water filters along with valves which control which tank are used for each engine. The way we set it up, this uh, engine here is your starboard motor which usually runs off the green tape. Green in nautical terms is equivalent to your starboard marker, starboard side, your light. So green and red reference starboard versus port. This boat has two tanks, a starboard tank and a port tank. Your starboard motor will draw off the starboard tank. Your center motor draws off both tanks. Port and starboard are being used. And your port tank draws off the, or the port motor draws off the port tank. Now these valves, I'll show you on this motor here, these valves have a pointy end and a, and a uh, tab where you can grab. The pointy end shows you what's being drawn from. So here, I'll show it to you this way. This control arm, if it were in the 90 degree angle, would be in the off position. By putting the pointy end towards the red tape, it's now allowing it to draw from the port tank. 
Same thing on this uh, uh, control valve. You've got the pointy end pointing at the green tape. If I wanted to shut it off, that would be the off position. I'll go ahead and open it back up. So now what you have is your standard setup. Three engines drawing off of two tanks. Your starboard tank, sorry, your starboard engine drawing off your starboard tank. Center engine drawing off both tanks. Port engine drawing off port tank. And you can control any of the systems regarding fuel. You can have any motor drawing off any tank. If you wanted to have all three drawn off one tank, for any reason, you would just go in and select which tank you want the engines to draw from. And if you have any questions regarding that, you can always contact us here at Sea Hunter and we can go over them with you in more detail. Okay, what I want to start looking at now is getting on the boat for the first time in the day, your startup every time you get on the boat. First thing you want to do is go ahead and put your three keys into your key switches. Then you're going to walk over to your center console. I'm going to climb in so you can see it through the camera. Along this wall, you've got three battery switches. Normally, they would be in the off position and you're going to turn all four of them. This one goes to on and each one of these three goes to the number one position. Now on these battery switches you also have a position which has the one plus two and position two. I want you to always use position one. The only reason you would use position two or one plus two is in the event where you are low on battery voltage on any of your motors. If you are at anchor with your electronics on and you tried to start your motor and it wouldn't start, then you come in here and you turn the battery switch to either number two or to one and two. But under normal operation, we're going, we're going to use them in the one position. You also have a panel along this wall which is an accessory panel. So you're going to go ahead and move the top switch to on and turn on any of the switches that you're going to need, which in your case, just go ahead and put them all on. Electronics, 12 volt outlets, cabin lights, and amplifier. These are all on the on position. Also inside the console, I just want to make a brief note. You have a panel at the very top right which is the alarm for your high water alarm in your bilge. If water rises to a level where your alarms are going to sound, this is what it would sound like. If you hear that alarm, it means water has risen in your bilge to a level where you need to check on it, either by manually turning on your bilge pumps or by checking to see where water is coming in through. It's a very rare occurrence that that alarm is ever tripped or that there is ever enough water in the boat for that alarm to sound, but it's an extra safety measure that you have and it's important you know it's there. Okay, Gary, I'm going to run the boat and show you some of the things that I do and hopefully you'll be able to follow along and use them when you're running the boat. We'll start at the control panel. This is your mercury control panel. When the control uh, panel is in the neutral position, you'll see the neutral lights turn on. When you engage the motors, the neutral lights turn off. Forward gear versus neutral versus reverse are very easy uh, to know based on the notches that the control drops into. Neutral has a notch and forward gear has a notch. Then you just move these controls forward to gain momentum on the engines. And you can see here on the RPMs, right about a thousand RPMs is a good speed for traveling through most residential canals. 
I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Garmin GPS displays. On the right hand corner of each display is a power button. When you hold it down, you'll see your Garmin displays turn on. If for some reason your Garmin displays do not turn on when you hold this power button down, there's a couple of things you could check. A, make sure the control panel inside the console is in the on position. Make sure your batteries are in the on position. And make sure the electronics switch on the control panel are in the on position. Once your Garmin displays load up, it'll take you to a main screen where you just touch I agree on the disclaimer for each screen. And what I normally do is I put GPS chart, navigation chart, so it'll give me a map of where my boat is. You have zoom in and zoom out features with this plus and minus button on the screen. Plus means more zoom, minus means less zoom. So normally I like to operate the boat at about an eighth of a mile zoom. And then on the other screen I will no normally turn on my sonar function so I can watch my depth finder. Right now we're exiting the canal and on my GPS screen here at the chart I can have a very clean display of my speed, my heading, and it's showing me my direction on a map and the map will rotate based on the direction of the boat. I can even zoom in a little more and get some real precise information on the channel that I'm exiting. And if you wanted to put additional displays in front of you, uh, for instance, there's times when I just want to look at both of my chart plotters on the top right hand side, sorry, top left hand side of this display is a home key. I have additional options if I want an additional chart, navigation chart, and I wanted to zoom in a little bit more, I can show two different charts one zoomed in a little bit more than the other. But I have quick and easy access to very sophisticated chart functions available on the, on the uh, Garmin displays. Additional information, remember this home button on your GPS displays will take you to your main screen if you wanted additional information, here you have information on your tides and your currents. So if you hit tides, it'll give us a display for today in our location, high tide and low tide. It's currently 12.48 p.m. and we're right at lowest tide for the day. Down here it's going to show us where low tide is and where high tide is. And here we can change the date, look for additional stations, toggle yesterday and today, functions that we use in our area quite often. Again, hit the home button and we can go to information and look at information on each trip. So, so far this boat has traveled seven miles it's been moving for 47 minutes and the maximum speed we run the boat at is 49.9 miles an hour. And obviously this boat will go a lot faster than that, but during the first 10 hours of operation we're breaking in the motors, we're going to try to keep it well below maximum RPM. Okay Gary, I'm going to go ahead and get the boat up on plane. One thing I want you to remember, when you're going to get the boat up on plane, we want to make sure that the engines are all the way in the down position. You've got a trim button here which controls all motors at the same time. 
You also have individual controls here for each motor individually. I use this control to make sure all my engines are down. And once my engines are down, I'm going to go ahead and get up on plane. You can watch the... Okay, Gary, I'm going to talk about a couple of features that this boat is capable of doing. First of all, if I wanted to balance the boat side to side with my motors only, I would come down here to the control panel, individual control panel, and if I want to raise that side of the boat and lower this side, the side that I want to go down I raise the motor for that side. What that does is it lowers this side of the boat. You can see that motor is raised. If you pan over and see that motor, by raising the motor on one side of the boat, it pushes that side of the boat down. Same thing on this side. If I raise this motor up, this side goes down. And what that will allow you to do is if you have a bunch of people sitting on one side, you can control the side-to-side -side motion of the boat with your motors. Now you also have trim tabs. Your trim tabs will allow you to control Your boat, look, I put one trim tab down and look how much it's leaned the boat over. Now, if you look out the back, this is how much change you can make on the boat side to side just using trim tabs. So what I tell my customers is the motors allow you to change the level on small amounts. The trim tabs allow you to change on large amounts. I'm going to go ahead and pick the trim tab back up. to run the boat and you have a lot of control to the boat with the motors and with the trim tabs. Another thing that you can control with the motors is the angle of the boat. And what I'm going to ask the cameraman to look at is your RPMs. So right now we're running the boat at about 3600 RPM. 3600 RPM with half a tank of fuel is 34 miles an hour right now. Here we have our speed on the GPS, our RPMs on the tachometer, and our control panel. Now without touching, without giving any more throttle to the motors, I'm gonna trim the engines up. By trimming the engines up, 
I have reduced the drag on the hull, raising the hull out of the water, you're getting more RPMs, and we've increased speed about three miles an hour. So when your engines are down, it pushes the nose of the boat down. That creates a lot of drag and slows the boat down. When you trim your engines up, it lifts the boat up, reduces drag, increasing speed. These are all things that you're gonna have to play with to see what makes you comfortable in the conditions you're running in. Right now, it's very calm where we're running. So we don't need to worry too much about pushing the nose of the boat down. There's no hopping and it's a very easy boat to drive in these conditions. If it was a lot rougher, I would trim the, if you stare at the front of the boat, by putting the, no, putting the engines down, I put the engines down, and right now you can see the nose of the boat has really dug into the water and there's no way that the boat can bounce. We've also slowed down significantly. So you can change the way the boat runs and you can change your speed simply by raising and lowering your engines and using engines and trim tabs to control how much of your boat is in the water. Again, I am going without adding any throttle, without giving it any additional gas. I'm gonna trim the engines up. And what I want the cameraman to look at right now is the view out of the front of the boat. So I'm gonna trim, I'm gonna trim the engines up. You can see the nose of the boat went up in the air, basically elevating a lot of the boat out of the water. We still have good visibility but now we've reduced drag, increased RPMs, and increased speed without giving it any extra throttle. That's gonna be something you use a lot on the boat. When you really wanna go fast, you wanna trim the engines up. If you're in rough, in rough conditions, you wanna trim the engines down. All right, let's spend some time on the accessory switch panel located on the dash. If you open these dash panels, you'll look underneath and here's all the switches for the major functions in the boat. Most of your lights and your pumps are located at the beginning, through the middle are the hardtop lights, and to the right are additional functions, uh, underwater lights and gunnels. So we'll start way over on the left, your navigation lights, you turn that on, it will turn on the red and the green light at the very front of the boat. Now you'll have to go to the front of the boat and flip the red and green light on. Oh, I'm sorry, open. That is mainly for running at low light and nighttime uh, portions of, of, of the day. Your anchor light is the white light located directly above the hard top. It is the highest point of the boat where you have a light. Instrument lights turn two pretty blue LED lights inside this instrument panel. Now inside the bilge area, you have two bilge pumps. You can manually turn those on from these two switches. Bilge pump forward, bilge pump aft. These bilge pumps also have an automatic switch which can turn them on if the water level gets high enough. Fresh and salt water wash down. Your fresh water wash down is located on the same side as your fresh water fill. And I'll show you right here, you have your fresh water fill and here you have your fresh water spigot. Okay, salt water wash down is over here on the starboard side. Once again, you've got on-off controls at the spigot and at the handle. 
These are the controls for your port and starboard live well. And remember, you have to have the seacocks opened in order for water to flow into the bait wells. So if you have your seacocks opened in the bilge, this is where you turn them on. Then you've got lights for your hard top the front spreader light and the back spreader lights are the biggest lights on the hardtop. You've got your fluorescent lights, which are your interior lights, and a map light, which is your underneath light. And I'll show you where they are here on the hardtop. These are your map lights. These are your fluorescent lights and your spreader lights are located on the very back of the hardtop and one located in the very front of the hardtop. And towards the end of the control uh, panel, switch panel, you've got your under gunnel lights, which are lights located all the way around the inside of the boat. At night, those are really the prettiest lights. And your underwater lights which I showed you on the outside of the boat, you have four underwater lights. Everything else on the switch panel is set up as an additional, additional switch in case we add options, but this boat does not have anything attached to the second half of this switch panel. Then coming back into the dash, I wanna show you this one control panel here. This is the Mercury start stop switch. So when you're on your boat during the day, you can start and stop your motors with these buttons instead of turning the key on and off. There I just started all three motors. Stop, stop, and stop. There I just turned all three off. And what that allows you to do is turn them on and off throughout the day without having to reach down here and turn your keys. You can leave your keys in the on position and start and stop your motors with those buttons. I'll briefly go over the radio function. You've got a red power button at the bottom left hand corner. You have three major functions, one an antenna, middle one is for an auxiliary input, and the third one is for an iPod connection. The top left hand corner button allows you to scroll through any menus and this knob acts as both volume and a selector switch. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my phone into the radio so you can see basically how this would operate if you're using an iPhone. At the top of the stereo, you have a push button, which will allow you to open the face of the radio. And then you slide your phone or your iPod in so that the insert uh, tab is at the bottom. Display is faced up. Control your volume with this knob. Top left button will allow you to toggle through your menus. And then you can see your volume control. And this is a very loud stereo system. I'm gonna turn it up about half volume and I think you'll be able to feel how loud the system is. So that's basic operation of your stereo. Again, you'll have manuals 
to the stereo, to the GPS system, to the mercury gauge. You'll have manuals for the controls to the motors. You will have manuals for all of these systems. But again, I want you to have something you can refer back to and see the way that I operated it and hopefully use it as a little bit of a cheat sheet as you start using the boat. Gary, I want to go over the leaning post assembly with you. I know you've seen it before, but this is the basic uh, setup for your leaning post. Underneath this back cushion, you have a cooler. Inside this cooler, there is a drain that requires a plug. You put the plug in the cooler and it'll keep ice and any water from draining out onto the deck. This cushion is held down with some magnets. So when you go to open it, it may have a little bit of tension, but that's just freeing the magnets. You've got tackle storage inside the main tray, two drawers, along with tackle drawers. You've got one, two, three, four, five cup holders, one, two, three, four, five, six rod holders in the leaning post. If you come around on this side, You've got a large open storage compartment, which is great for storing cleaning supplies, anything that people bring on board, shoes, it can all be stored in this large storage section. Again, underneath the main seat, you have more storage. This is a great area to store the covers for your electronics, extra plugs for your bait wells and your coolers, along with anything along the lines of sunblock, and anything else that you don't mind or need easy access to. You don't mind if it gets wet. It's pretty dry storage in there, but there is a chance it gets wet if you wash the boat. It might get wet in there. Then along this side of the console, sorry, of the leaning post, you've got additional tackle storage. You've got large tackle trays. And there's a lot of uh, storage and seating in this one uh, leaning post and it's really our most popular feature when we build the boats this extra large leaning post looking forward of the console you have a real large three-person bolster with a headrest this cushion will lift and allow you access into the hatch this hatch will allow air to flow into the console in case anybody wants to go into the console and either get out of the weather or maybe just have air flowing through if there's a young child asleep in there. Hatch can be closed. And this cushion velcros back in. Here we have hand supports for the people sitting in the forward part of the boat along with cup holders. On the floor, just in front of the console, we have two storage compartments. These are long storage compartments. Uh, great for cleaning brushes, gaffs, any kind of long pole will slide into this compartment. In the center, you have a large box that can be used as a bait well. It can be used as additional storage. Uh, in some cases, it can be used as a cooler. If you have enough people and enough drinks to bring on board, this, this space will hold ice for a long time since the entire boat is foam filled. Uh, these are all great coolers. And perfect for storage they're also very dry they'll hold uh, they'll hold water out of the hatches okay looking forward of the boat here we have the fiberglass seating module for the 37 sea hunter along with the filler piece that can do double as a table now guys it's important for you to know that when you're running the boat we want this table down and secured as a filler piece don't run the boat with the table up like this. This table is meant specifically to handle drinks and food. You're going to sit around it and enjoy it. Uh, but at speed, I highly recommend that you secure it in the down position. I'm going to go ahead and secure it so you see how this filler piece is secured. Uh, here we have three latches. And you've got a pedestal leg. So to remove the table... We pull up, rest the piece on the cushions, remove
of the leg. You slide the table into place. You may want to make sure that the edge of the table clears these cushions. It may take a little bit of maneuvering just to make sure you don't scratch the cushions. Then you take each latch and that will secure the table in place. Then you can snap down the cushion for the centerpiece. You can put your table leg inside your console. Just to go over, you do have storage underneath each one of your fiberglass seating pieces. You've got storage inside, so you can put additional items inside each one. And to secure the snaps, you've got a strap. You can get your thumb in it and snap them down. Then looking forward to the boat, you have two anchor lockers. And you have one anchor in each side. Okay, Gary, I want to show you your battery charging system. There's a battery charger on board that'll charge all four of your batteries. Behind this plug, a simple extension cord will plug in from any shore power into this plug and automatically turn on your battery charger. And that battery charger will, turn, will in turn charge all four of your batteries with those battery switches in the on or off position. But I recommend you turn them all off while you're charging. And this is great to keep your batteries fresh, especially if you haven't used the boat for a little while. Uh, anytime you're gonna get back on the boat after the boat's been sitting for an extended period of time, maybe a week, maybe even five days, uh, you wanna go ahead and charge those batteries up before you use the boat, if at all possible. Gary, I wanna go over the dive door with you. Uh, the dive door setup has two latches each latch has a locking pin as an extra safety. So to open the latch, you would pull the pin outward and rotate the latch. Again, pull the pin outward, rotate the latch. Then you can let the dive door in with the ropes. Now remember, your dive door floats. Just like the rest of the boat, it's all foam filled. To get it down, any kind of weight that goes on the boat, for instance, my body weight, would rotate the dive ladder down. Again, when you're climbing out of the water onto the boat, you would just put a little bit of weight on the dive ladder. And then to close the dive ladder, reel it back in with the ropes. Close the latches and you want to make sure you hear the click. Again, I'm going to do it so you hear the click of the safety pin falling in place. There you saw that safety pin uh, fall in place and your dive ladder is secure. Okay, Gary, this is the part that I think is mostly for Mrs. Seabrook. I'm down inside the bathroom area to get inside the bathroom first. I lift the section of the cushion and then I lift the hatch that will expose the bathroom. Once I'm in it, you have two important functions here. Actually, there's three buttons you need to know how to use the toilet. You have a flush button. That's how you flush the toilet. You have a ball valve. This ball valve allows you to let water into the toilet. It's normally in the off position when you're gonna use the toilet or if you know you're gonna use the toilet that day, you can go ahead and turn it on. 
That allows water into the toilet. When you're done using the toilet, you flush. On the very furthest part of the wall, port side of the toilet, is a control valve. This valve will let uh, the waste go to your holding tank. In this position, where it's pointing downward, it's pointing to the holding tank. If you want to send it directly overboard, you rotate this valve upwards. That will take it out the back of the boat through the valve that we talked about in the bilge and take your waste directly overboard. Once again, this is your flush mechanism. This is the valve that allows water into the toilet. And this is the valve that selects whether the waste goes to the holding tank or overboard.